In today's tutorial we're gonna recreate part of an intro from yesterday's video, so it's gonna be about 3D editing. But before we begin, I'm running the editing shift, so if you want to speed up your workflow, check out the description below. With that being said, we're gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. Dude, I'm recording this tutorial at 4.30pm and I have to release the video today. <laughs> no clue how I'm gonna do it, but the daily needs to keep going. By the way, this was actually the first animation that I created in 12 frames per second, because you know, I always use posterized time, but if you just straight away create in lower frame rate, it's gonna be better for your PC performance. So I'm just gonna quickly change it to 12 and also we're gonna change it to 1920 by 1080 and let's call it main comp five seconds maybe a little bit more eight seconds is gonna be enough let's hit enter so first we're gonna create a new solid i'm gonna change the color to white hit ok we're gonna rename it to white bg now we need the text so i'm gonna hit ctrl plus t i'm gonna swap it to stroke and we're gonna start typing animation i'm gonna recenter it definitely change the font size something like that should do i'm gonna put it here maybe decrease the stroke a little bit all right so this is gonna hmm, go somewhere from here then i'm gonna hit ctrl d put the other layer somewhere here and we're just gonna slide them in so i'm gonna create a keyframe for position for both move forward and now we're just gonna try to put them somewhere in the middle like that select all keyframes and we're gonna apply intro graph when you're working with lower frame rate, you gotta keep it in mind and you need to create a bit faster movements, I guess, to just make it look better. And by the way, one important thing is going to composition, composition settings, advanced. And here I found that it worked pretty good for this type of animation, setting shutter angle at 100 and shutter phase at negative 50. Because if I work with 30 frames per second, I just set the volumes a little bit higher. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna create another text, which is gonna be 3D. We're gonna swap stroke with fill. We center it and we're ready to create a new camera. I'm gonna choose 50 millimeter preset, hit OK. OK again, new null object, parent the camera to the null, put it underneath, change the color. <laughs> I'm saying it already so smoothly because I've said it so many times. Always the same procedure in every video. We're gonna rename it to Cam Control 1. Turn on the 3D layer on everything apart from the white background. I'm gonna put it actually below our camera. And now we're ready to open up the second view. Make sure to be in the custom view one, unless you wanna work with something else. And now here we need to toggle transparency grid because I can see our assets. All right. So now we need to create some separation between our main text, which is 3D, and our background text. So I'm just gonna put it to the front with Z position. Now we could actually hit P for our camera and just move backwards as a starting position. And I'm gonna create a keyframe for positioning our cam control one. Now let's move it somewhere here and we're just gonna get closer. I'm gonna select both easy ease. Then I'm gonna head over to the graph editor and we're just gonna create a peak on the left. That's extremely slow. So we're just gonna grab that keyframe and put it somewhere here. Much better. I don't know, for some reason I really like low frame rates. It's looking so good. And now we need to create another solid, which is gonna be kind of a transition. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. I'm gonna change the color to black, hit OK. Change it to hmm, black transition maybe. And now I'm gonna head over to the pen tool and I'm gonna create a mask that is kind of random. Something like that, I guess. And now I'm gonna add the effect called Turbulent Displays. And we don't really need to turn it into 3D because I don't really plan on creating depth with this. I just kind of want to have a black background. So now I'm going to change it to one view. What we need to do is basically bump up the complexity to achieve that effect. The other settings I'm going to leave like they are. So now what we need to do is select that layer, hit M on the keyboard, actually double M, and then mask expansion is going to pop up. So I'm going to keyframe it. I'm going to decrease the value. And also I'm going to hold shift, click S, and I'm going to bump up the scale. And now I'm gonna drag that keyframe somewhere here maybe, move forward, and we're gonna bump up the value for mask expansion. So that gives us such a good effect. All right, so I just grabbed the Instagram logo, I'm gonna resize it to something like that. I'm gonna actually pre-compose that layer, move all attributes into the new comp, rename, and hit enter. Now I'm gonna turn it into 3D, and we kinda wanna put that logo above. So that's how it's looking. I would probably just go to the logo again, and drag Y position a bit higher. To see if it works out, we need to duplicate cam control one, hit U, delete the last keyframe, parent one to two, and now we're gonna move towards our logo with Y position. So now I'm just gonna offset it, probably apply the med graph, a lot of playing around with the timing. I'm gonna squeeze it in, go here. Okay, we're getting there. I'll probably go to our black transition, hit U, and squeeze in the keyframes. Let's see. Okay. The only thing I don't like is that we kind of have a harsh stop on our logo. So I'd probably extend the keyframes, go to the graph editor, 
and I'll just take that pick more towards the left, so the movement is gonna smooth out for a bit longer. Let's see now. Yeah, better. I'll probably squeeze in the keyframes, move backwards. Yeah, perfect. And now I can see our Instagram logo in the beginning, so we're just gonna offset that layer, like that. I'm gonna probably scale it up a bit, and then I'm gonna create another text, which is Instagram. Then I actually turned off the panel with character, so we're just gonna bring it back, and we're gonna change the color to white. Now I'm gonna put it behind our logo, turn it into 3D, recenter, and with position, I'm gonna move it away. Let's scale it up, and we're just gonna trim it to the beginning of our IG logo. Pretty cool, it's giving us a little bit more depth to this. I absolutely love that transition with these kind of all over the place edges. Looking them awesome. So now I feel like it's the time to add a shake, so make sure to double click camera and choose the type to note camera. I'm gonna hit OK, go back, open up transform, alt click point of interest, type in wiggle and in brackets to comma 20, click away. And now we got a nice smooth shake. And now it's the time to add some of the effects. So first of all, I would like to separate IG logo from the Instagram a bit more. So I'm just gonna add drop shadow to this. We're gonna change the opacity to 100%, distance to zero, and softness to 100. And this has already made a huge difference. So without and with. Now the next effect I added is shine. It's from Red Giant. It's a paid plugin, just so you know. First, I'm gonna head over to shimmer. I'm gonna bump up the amount and I'm just gonna make it more detailed by bumping up the value over here. Okay, let's see. The thing I don't like is that we can see the corners over here. So I'm just gonna probably double click the rectangle tool while the IG logo is selected. And now we're gonna open up properties for the mask. I'm gonna decrease the expansion and then I'm gonna bump up the feather. I feel like it's not really noticeable anymore. The next thing I'm gonna add is deep glow to Instagram. I'm gonna change it to 0.1. And as I'm looking at that logo, I feel like we could head over here again and add curves. I'm just gonna bump up the shadows a bit more. Yeah, it's looking much better. And play around with the colors. Hmm. They got different presets here, but none of them seems to be good for that scene. Maybe none. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. All right, we're gonna leave it like that. It's a bit different from the original version, but seems to be better. Okay, on top, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna add vignette. And I feel like we could fade in that logo. So I'm just gonna set keyframes for opacity, offset it a little bit, and now with motion blur, it should be perfect. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Make sure everything that has a cube has a motion blur as well. Okay, that's looking so good. I just remembered that I added one more thing, which is a slight zoom into this. So I'm just gonna duplicate cam control 2, hit U, delete the last keyframe, parent 2 to 3, move forward, and just adjust the position a little bit. I'm just thinking maybe let's spice it up by adding a little bit of rotation to the logo. So I'm gonna hit R, keyframe Z, and let's just do it like that. And we're gonna apply one of the graphs. Is it better? Hmm, I don't think so. So let's delete it. All right, so that'll be it for this tutorial. Make sure to check out the editing shift to speed up your workflow and also try working with lower frame rates. I have a lot of fun doing that. So I highly recommend to try it out yourself. And I have to go because I gotta edit that video for today and also create a thumbnail. So with that said, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.